Hey, what's up guys? In today's video, I'm going to show you how to replace the injectors from this Mercedes S-Class with a V6 engine. So in general, if something goes wrong with the injectors, there are usually four possibilities. First, when the injector is leaking too much fuel inside the cylinders, that can happen when the tip of the injector is corroded or for some reasons the little holes are way bigger than they should and that's why it's worth to check it out at least go ahead and check out the fuel trims on a scan tool all right so we've got here the values for short term and long term fuel trim for each bank here you've got the values the most important thing of course you can also graph them but that will depend on what kind of scan tool you have so let's say the engine is idling and you see here on bank one the fuel trims are negative especially the long term fuel trim is negative like minus 10 what that means is the computer is cutting off fuel because for some reason the mixture of air and fuel inside the combustion chamber is not 14.7 parts of air and one part of fuel it's gonna be less air and more fuel so that's why the computer is compensating for that by keeping the injector open less so in that way there is less fuel sprayed into the cylinders obviously any deviation of the fuel trim from zero percent which is perfect mixture of air and fuel it can happen from a lot of other reasons not only the injectors but today we're focusing on the injectors so let's see now if for example the long term fuel trim and short term fuel trim on one of the banks or both banks is positive well that means that the computer is spraying more fuel inside the system or at least is trying to do that because the oxygen sensor is detecting a lean mixture which means that there is a lot more air and not so much fuel so the computer will try to compensate that by keeping the injector open for longer when the engine is running so in that way the cylinder it will get a lot more fuel so as i said you can go ahead and do that start the engine and watch the values i already done that i cannot do that right now because i'm in a special place here but anyway one thing i can do is to check the fuel pressure on the fuel rail we've got here a shredder valve because without fuel pressure the injectors are useless so we need first to check if we've got fuel pressure and if it's the right amount and it's also important to see if the fuel pressure will keep up when the engine is under a load because when the engine is under a load and that's also the moment when the fuel pump must keep up and maintain a steady fuel pressure inside the fuel rail which is ready to be delivered by the injectors okay let's connect the adapter and i'm going to actually use this scan tool to turn on the fuel pump We've got S220 up to 2002, left hand gasoline, and we've got S320 control module drive. Okay, so let's go to active test. We've got fuel pump. Okay, I gotta turn on and off the ignition. Okay, so we've got the fuel pump on and it went up quite fast so we've got around 55 psi or almost four bars four times the atmospheric pressure so from this point if you have access to the fuel pressure with the fuel gauge like this go ahead and turn on the engine and see if this fuel pressure will drop you can also increase the speed of the engine and see if the pressure will decrease it should never decrease below 45 psi or three bars because that will mean the injectors will not spray the fuel desired by the computer. If you have a bi-directional scan tool like this, it's a lot easier to diagnose the injectors because you can produce here leaner mixture or richer mixture and then you can watch the live data on each cylinder. This is another way you can test each injector on each cylinder. And that's pretty cool because you also test the circuits. You test the command from the computer to the injector as you can see you can choose cylinder 2 for example obviously if you turn off the injector this is the consequence the engine speed will drop and the idling will become a lot poorer okay so i'm gonna turn on the fuel pump once more and i want to empty the fuel rail of fuel because we're about to open the injectors so we don't want so much fuel pressure inside the fuel rail Okay, let's 
that off the fuel pump. Okay, there might still be residual pressure. Well, that's enough for me. Okay, as you can see, the fuel pressure dropped to zero. All right, so now let's say that you don't have a bi-directional scan tool and you want to turn off the pump and empty the fuel rail. Well, here we've got the fuse box and this one right here is the fuse for the fuel pump. Okay, so you just take out this fuse while the engine is running and it will have exactly the same effect as you saw. The engine will run for a little while until the fuel pressure is gone. Okay, let's take out this fuel gauge. Okay guys, so I hope that you understand all these tests you can do on the injectors using the fuel trims, using the fuel pressure. This can be quite complicated for a beginner, but once you understand how the system works, it's a lot easier. And obviously, it's also a lot easier to test if you have proper equipment. But anyway, with a voltmeter, a fuel pressure gauge, you can still do quite advanced tests and find out if the injectors are bad or not. And with that being said, let's go ahead and see how to remove the injectors and do a couple of tests with the voltmeter, as I said. Let's unplug the connector from the coil packs. Let's remove this airline from the secondary air injection pump. Unplug each injector. Let's unplug this AGR valve solenoid. We've got this PCV hose in the way. Okay, let's unplug the injectors from this side as well. Let's take out this PCV hose. So we've got here a special clamp which can be opened with a 8 millimeter. We've got this PCV hose here. Okay, now it's free from the PCV hose. We've got a couple of more here. We've got the intake runners connector. Yeah, basically we can take out the fuel rail from this point. We don't need to do more undoing here. Okay, so next with a 17 millimeter, let's disconnect this fuel line from the fuel rail. Next with the E10, we can disconnect the fuel rail from the intake manifold because it's connected on this bracket like this. Okay, so now the fuel rail should come out together with the injectors. Okay, in my situation it came out quite easy. Now let's see on the other side. Okay, it came out easy as well. So basically all the fuel trims are dependent on the size of those holes. They shouldn't be larger, they shouldn't be smaller, they shouldn't be clogged up or rusty. These holes are a little bit rusted on some injectors. And as you can see the injector has two o-rings, one on the tip and one which sits on the fuel rail. Because usually rubber and gasoline is not a good friend. And for example if this o-ring here is brittle and it's not flexible enough, it will not seal, and you probably have a massive fuel leak by the fuel rail. And that can also actually cause a negative fuel trim because that fuel will eventually sit on the bottom here and it will leak inside the cylinders. Next, let's do a test with a voltmeter, turn it to 200 ohms, because the specs on these injectors shouldn't be more than 15 ohms. We've got 15.3 ohms. Let's see the second one. This one was for cylinder 6. Okay, we got a little bit lower, 14.4 ohms. Let's see it for cylinder 4. We've got 14.5. So again, it shouldn't be over 15 ohms and it shouldn't be below 13 ohms. Let's see for cylinder 3, 14.5. Let's see for cylinder 2, 14.1. Okay, we've got a little bit low resistance here. Let's see cylinder 1, we've got 14.4, 14.3.
If you watch some of the previous videos, you will see that this engine had misfires on cylinder 4 and 5. And this is the injector for cylinder 5. And this doesn't necessarily mean that the injector is bad. However, if the resistance is higher than it should, it means that the electromagnet will need a lot more power to be fully opened in order to spray the fuel. So if, for example, you have a higher resistance here, it might mean that the cylinder is misfiring because of lack in fuel since the injector is not able to spray fuel inside the cylinder or is not spraying enough fuel since it has a high resistance as i said the pulse width sent it by the computer is not opening enough the injector to release the fuel pressure from the fuel rail into the cylinders a final test let's see with the voltmeter what values you can read at the connector on each injector we've got 7.10 volts let's see the second one 7 volts we've got again 7 volts let's see on bank 2 7 volts 7 volts and 7 volts on this connector which is also yellow for some reason not anymore okay we've got 7 now Oh, that's pretty strange okay so we've got pretty much the same values on all the connectors the car battery voltage is 13.4 okay so now to install the injectors as i said make sure that these o-rings are in good condition around here and you need to have as well this plastic seal right by the tip of the injector you want to insert the injector on the fuel rail you can use some silicone lubricant to make it go in there a lot easier okay just clicks in and we've got here this clip which needs to go right in between this line on the injector so the injector is secure now so just do the same procedure on all the injectors check up the o-rings check up these seal clips make sure that the holes are not covered in debris and then we can install the fuel rail back make sure the injectors are ready to go inside the hole on the intake manifold and obviously clean it up before that and press it in on this side is on let's do the same on the other side Okay, so it went in here as well, so we can tighten the bolts now. And from this point just plug in the connectors and reposition all this wiring harness, reconnect these PCB hoses and that's it. Okay guys, so that was it about the injectors on this car. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. You know, do everything. Subscribe, stay tuned. Go ahead and check out the other videos I made about this S-Class. If you have questions, let me know. And until next time, drive safe so I can see you in the next video.